Of these 10 beloved celebrities, which one has the absolute fewest haters? Well, let's begin by looking at Jack Black, whose hilarious paparazzi interactions are just one reason almost everybody loves him. For example, after being surrounded by a horde of photographers, Jack Black deliberately pulled the stupidest poses on his bike before trolling the paparazzi by doing this. It's impossible to follow me when I go this fast. Yee! <laughs> 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 in my dust. Which was a similar response to when he was ambushed by a single photographer. So, any new projects we should know about, sir? <laughs> While most celebrities are concerned about keeping a manicured image, Jack Black shows that being an idiot can be just as beneficial, although he's also able to show maturity in the moments where it matters, like when he took the time to sing to a young kid who was a fan of School of Rock. Jack Black, he's just such a lovable guy. How could you not like him? Met him once briefly, he was nice enough. He was really great with his kid. Something about Jack Black just feels so human, but while Jack Black has always been loved by everybody, the now loved John Cena was once disliked by many. As the face of the WWE for roughly 15 years, people have said about John Cena, I hated him when he was being shoved down our throats by Vince, while a Sportster article claimed he was disliked for being over pushed. This had only been done, however, because he was too perfect. He maintains a clean image outside of WWE and is a perfect role model for kids who form a big part of WWE's fan base, and he carried the company on his back through and through for over 15 years. He was a reliable name for WWE during that time, not to mention he learned one of the world's hardest languages just to further the company's presence. WWE has really never been able to penetrate China. So I figured if one of WWE's top superstars could bridge the language barrier, maybe we can get some relevancy over there. On top of this, John Cena holds the world record for granting 650 wishes through Make-A-Wish, which is especially crazy given no other figure has granted more than 200 wishes. When you experience something something like the reward of a make-a-wish. If you're not moved, I don't know if you have a beating heart. How can haters hate on him? He's a good guy with a kind heart, Cena, you're the man. With all this in mind, it's no surprise Cody Rhodes stated, John's the ultimate role model. Although if we're talking about ultimate role models, then Steve Irwin has to come next. Not only did he treat the media and his fans with respect, but of course animals too, using all of his income to purchase conservation areas in four different countries. What good is a fast car, a flash house, and a gold plate of dunny to me. Absolutely no good at all. I've been put on this planet to protect wildlife and wilderness areas, which in essence is going to help humanity. And you know money? Money's great. I can't get enough money. And you know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to buy wilderness areas with it. Every single cent I get goes straight into conservation. And guess what, Charles? I don't give a rip whose money it is, mate. I'll use it and I'll spend it on buying land. When interviewed by The Age in 2003, Steve used the interview to promote the protection of endangered species, and it seems his good nature was continued by the rest of his family. I never met Steve, but met the rest of the family when they were filming on Morton Island. Great bunch, friendly, approachable, so knowledgeable and willing to have a chat. Won us all over and were more than happy to join us for a drink in the evening. Steve Irwin was so kind toward animals that even after being killed by a stingray, fans have stated, I'm still a firm believer that Steve would have been like, Cricket, I'm so sorry stingray, I didn't mean to scare you. You were just defending yourself and I was in your space. Gosh, what a beauty. Admittedly, there are people who don't like Steve because he kept animals locked in his zoo, although finding a reason to hate Terry Crews is a much more difficult mission. In fact, when you Google Terry Crews in the media, all you'll find is articles like 19 reasons why Terry Crews is a gift to the world and nine of the biggest reasons to love Terry Crews, both of which, like Jack Black, citing Terry Crews as less than serious nature. For example, he does the exact same jump at every red carpet event, although there's another the Terry Crews meme that's a whole lot better. Daniel the Goat wrote on Twitter, I keep this pic of Terry Crews in my wallet so I can see it when I'm about to waste money on things I don't need lol, which Terry realized was a pretty good idea. I keep this pic of myself in my wallet so I can see it when I'm about to waste money on things I don't need lol, although the reason Terry Crews is ideal for the photo is because he's also incredibly disciplined. In a Reddit AMA he explained, I spend almost two hours a day working out and it's therefore no surprise he he's built such a crazy physique, which has helped him to land some of Hollywood's most lovable roles, like Cheeseburger Eddie and Latrell Spencer from White Chicks. Terry Crews has also maintained his marriage for almost 35 years, which is a great indicator of likability, given Tom Hanks has done the same. In fact, the only time Tom Hanks ever got angry in public was when somebody bumped into his wife. Stop the 
Knock it over my wife. Although he has been exposed for behaving badly on film sets, only the person who exposed him was Tom Hanks himself. Not everybody is at their best every single day on a motion picture set, the two-time Oscar winner said. I've had tough days trying to be a professional when my life has been falling apart in more ways than one, and the requirement for me that day is to be funny, charming, and loving, and it's the last way I feel. Despite often feeling frazzled, Tom Hanks appears legendary in almost every role. However, even then, his movies are often hated, well, again, by Tom Hanks himself. Okay, let's admit this. We have all seen movies that we hate. I've been in some movies that I hate. You have seen some of my movies and you hate them, with Tom's honesty about his bad moments only making him even more likable. In fact, the only location you might find a Tom Hanks hater is r slash unpopular opinion, where one user responded, upvote to the realest unpopular opinion I've ever seen on this sub. Well done, you absolute psychopath. Although nothing could be more psychopathic than despising Bob Ross, who was not only loved for his extremely wholesome persona, but also for inspiring millions to become artists themselves. Bob Show brought me so much joy, peace, and encouragement as a child. He was one of the reasons I started painting. I remember buying my first painting set and painting along to one of his episodes. I eventually realized that his style of painting was not for me, but his warm heart and gentle encouragement is something that I will never forget. In fact, every time I make mistakes in one of my paintings, I hear him saying, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. This follows Bob Ross's other philosophy that being different is not bad or good, it just is. And in case this wasn't wholesome enough, Bob Ross donated around 1,200 paintings, which was sold to help with fundraisers, while he refused to be paid by PBS for his show, and instead gave all 403 episodes to the TV network for free. Although with one single article about Bob Ross once being difficult to work with, it seems Weird Al Yankovic's legacy might be even cleaner. His genuinely funny songs had the advantage of being part of everybody's childhood, and while his interviews already show that he's a super awesome guy, those who have met him in real life say he's even cooler. For example, Patton Oswalt once said that Weird Al is the lone exception to the phrase never meet your heroes, while Kurt Cobain literally said he knew Nirvana had made it when Weird Al called him to get permission to parody Smells Like Team Spirit. This is because Weird Al personally reaches out to each artist before he parodies them, not because it's required by law, but instead out of respect. Even then, Weird Al pays royalties to those he chooses to parody, which in turn makes him loved by other artists, except for Coolio or Weird Al Yankovic's one and only hater. After Weird Al parodied Gangster's Paradise by instead making Amish Paradise, Coolio hated the song and chose to slam Weird Al on a different track, thus starting their feud. The two eventually squashed their beef 10 years later in 2006, with Weird Al's one and only public feud, placing him lower than James Buck. His role as Jay in The Inbetweeners was of such legendary status, every viewer couldn't help but love him, but while his character in the show was braggadocious and sometimes mean-spirited, James Buckley was the opposite in real life. When he began uploading to YouTube in 2016, people realized James Buckley couldn't have been more humble, which has since helped him to become the highest paid star on Cameo. You're a Cameo millionaire. Yeah, I don't want to rip people off. I charge 40 quid, you know, two mates can go in 20 quid each for their other mate down the pub. The only real disaster in James Buckley's career was the in-betweeners 10-year reunion, prompting him to tweet feeling pretty hated right now. Although given James Buckley is one of the smallest celebrities on this list, Keanu Reeves has to come next. His lack of haters can be summarized by two simple words, likable vibe. Keanu Reeves is known for being one of the most relaxed, humble, down-to-earth guys in Hollywood, being spotted on subway and park benches as if he were just another person. On a subreddit dedicated to Keanu Reeves being awesome, the second top post of all time reads, actors that nobody hates annual meeting, followed by Keanu sitting beside Tom Hanks. In fact, Keanu Reeves is so loved on Reddit, he overtook Barack Obama to achieve the most upvoted AMA of all time, where he used most of the attention to prop up other actors. This discussion about him being loved only makes others join the train and like him also, although there's one more celebrity who likely has even fewer haters, the one and only Mr. Rogers. His lack of cynics requires little explanation. Fred Rogers was simply unhateable. His demeanor was so kind, calm, and caring that when his car was stolen from outside of the network, the thieves returned the car to the exact same spot two days later, with a note on the windscreen reading, if we'd known it was yours, we never would have taken it. Mr. Rogers was the definition of leading by example, as Fred's work for the greater good did not take the form of Martin rallying or picketing. Fred didn't march against Jim
Jim Crow. He cast black actors on his program, with his kind nature certainly extending to outside of the show. I actually met him a few times when I was younger, I knew his grandson. And his personality wasn't just some facade he used on camera. He was genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever met. By all accounts, he actually was the kind and gentle man that he appeared to be on TV. In fact, this person thought hating Mr. Rogers was a sign of narcissistic parenting, with his likability being summarized by one single sentence. Mr. Rogers was, and in spirit remains, living proof that it's possible to conquer evil with kindness.